justice for all. We'll begin the meeting with a moment of silence. Obviously, mindful of the families from Dayton and El Paso who have suffered over the past week. Announce the meeting is being recorded and televised by the local cable company. I'd like a motion to approve bill and payroll warrants. So moved. Second. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Like to a uh, motion to accept correspondence in the read file. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public forum. Now is the time for anyone to speak on something that's not on the agenda. And why isn't it on the agenda, Chief? It is, and it came in today, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> this is why I was going to ask Dan to speak in a, in a second, probably, because he's we'll on, the, on the Plymouth County <laughs> Mosquito Control Committee. Yeah, that's one of my topics. Yes, okay. I was notified today about Tripoli. Did you want Dan to take care of that? No, you can do it. Go we, ahead, Chief. we were notified today by the state, um, myself and the Board of Health, that um, Tripoli was located in in the, in, in, in the northeast corner of uh, the town of Whitman. Um, we are one of several towns in southern or in Plymouth County, um, which is now now um, affected by the by the uh, Tripoli. So they will be conducting air. The state will, will be conducting aerial spraying starting Thursday, August 8th um, at dusk and evening hours. Um, there's all kinds of information on the town's website about it. Um, it's not a danger. They just recommend that you keep your windows closed and look on the website and you find all that information as to what you need to do. Um, the um, biggest recommendation that they have is if you're going outside at dusk or at night to um, put on bug repellent and stay away from any sitting waters or anything like that effect and get rid of it if you can okay so that's on that mr chairman if i could be so obliged for just take up two more minutes of your time and that's it i um this has to do with the heat wave that we had about two weeks ago with emergency management so i can either like cover it now if you want or later on in the agenda it's your call go to it mr chairman and board members in light of all the social media issues that we have experienced i feel the need to public publicly set the record straight to reassure our residents as it relates to emergency preparedness i'm troubled that i need to come before you this evening to defend our great community you the board and public safety after a rogue resident took to social media making false claims and statements related to the recent heat wave about two weeks ago and in his words failure of this town <clears throat> The resident questioned our commitment to the community and our professional ethics to serve our residents on social media. The resident was quick to point out his personal opinion of how we were dealing with the impending heat wave, which was both uneducated and an and ignorant view. He also took parts of an internal email, which I sent to this board and dissected it to print only what was needed in an attempt to show incompetence in, our, in, in my operations. Furthermore, what is most troubling is this resident verbally attacked and bullied one of my members at a local grocery store that day, berating him in public as to why a cooling center was not open and my, meaning the chief's, lack of action showed poorly on them as firefighters in the community. He continued as to why we weren't doing anything for the public or the senior population. It was so bad that another citizen stepped in, looked at my firefighter, and stated something to the fact of, I bet this is just what you want to deal with today. Bullying is unacceptable in any venue, but to confront one of my members in a public venue and berate them to the point where others take notice and comment is not only ignorant, but is troublesome. This type of soapbox grandstanding, chest pounding antics prove nothing but the person is insolent and has no interest in the truth or topic at hand and is generally self-serving for a personal agenda. This type of attitude or politics this person routinely displays has no place in our community. The person continues to speak of his displeasure and dislike of me and our operations to many in the public, which I'm a big boy, I don't really care. But he fails to display his displeasure when he sees me personally, and confirmed, which confirms to me that his childish antics are simply for grandstanding and an attempt to show people how great he may be in his mind, but clearly demonstrates how insignificant he actually is. The facts of this, Mr. Chairman, 
One person went on a rampage of dislike and discontent without obtaining specific facts related to our procedures. Assumptions were made without taking time to make a simple phone call to inquire with the agency of responsibility, which is my department, in these events. Had a simple call been made, all of these residents' concerns would have been addressed, and instead he chose to grandstand on social media, which is becoming way too common. To, to reiterate to, to this board and the residents, the fire rescue department, police department, and all town agencies are always prepared and we are ready for anything that Mother, may, that, that mother Nature may throw at us. That's our job. We have never and will never leave our residents unprepared or uninformed for these events. We use social media, reverse 911, the town website to notify residents and other agencies. This was not my first heat wave or natural event. And history proves in this community that no one, and I mean no one, uses a cooling center, warming center, or shelter while they still have electrical power and during the first 48 hours of any natural event. We have had cooling centers, warming centers, and shelters in the past with zero attendance, with one exception. We had a major snowstorm which power was out for several days. We opened up a shelter, residents came, they charged their cell phones, their iPads, and their computers, and then they went home. And that was only after we, we had no power for several days, and it was only after 48 hours. This event, we had power. Every housing authority in Whitman, just so you know, Whitman, Harbor Court, Pine Circle, and Sesson Terrace have their own community rooms. They're all air conditioned. They all have generator backup. They're self-sufficient. They were fine. Just because we know this doesn't mean that we do not respond to our community's potential needs, and the answer is no. We had our plan in place on Thursday for that specific heat wave. The plan called for a cooling center under three potential conditions. Number one, if we lost power. Number two, if the heat wave went longer than 48 hours. And number three, if we, get, if we began to see issues with residents requesting assistance. Sunday was D-Day, and we were monitoring the conditions as we always do. We opened on Sunday because of two reasons. We were at the 48 hour mark, and the, and the potential for power failure was relayed to us by national grid workers earlier that morning when a car took out a pole on School Street, the National Grid crew specifically said to us, we're starting to see fuse issues and transformer issues because of the heat. Because of that, and I want to be perfectly clear, because of that, those two issues, we opened the center in accordance to our plan. We did not open the center because of this one rural resident out mouthing off on social media. Just remember this, we are on the street. We know what's going on in our community. We work closely with the police department, council and agent, and housing authority. We, we maintain a constant pulse of this community at all times. In any uptick in calls, requesting for assistance or negative changes, we have the ability to modify and respond in an instant. Finally, there was a comment about not using our volunteers because they will become burnt out. Mr. Chairman, we had two volunteers available for that weekend deployment. We deployed them when the need arises. Had we opened a center on Friday or Saturday, we would have had no volunteers for Sunday when the greatest potential was there for usage. There was a comment about it would not break the bank to open a center. Who do people think that we can hire back to staff these centers? And where is the budget money coming from? There is no budget item for these type of centers or shelters. When I addressed it several years ago, it fell on deaf ears. Our volunteers are, are required to have specific training from MEMA guidelines for policies and procedures when operating a shelter. It's just, you just can't pull somebody off the street and say, I, I need you to, to go staff this shelter for me. We can't simply hire back firefighters, police officers, and, and council on aging workers to staff these centers. We must rely on our volunteers who do a great job. Our CERT director with one other member staffed our cooling center all day on Sunday and with no great surprise, with no company except for residents who stopped in to see if they could help out. That's what makes Whitman a great town. All of our residents continuously look out for each other, and that's why we operate the way that we operate. So I just wanted the board to know that we're on, on the job, we know what's going on, we always have plans in place, and social media is becoming pretty much out of control with Monday morning quarterbacks thinking that they know what they're talking about when they don't. Thank you very much, Chief. Does anyone Thank have any questions or comments? No. Well said. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Approval of meeting minutes, open session July 9th, 2019. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All abstain.
Was I here for that meeting? It was three, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, you want to then I'll say from that one as well. Board of Health is in the back car. We have a. I see them. We're going to move them up front. Uh, it's time for a public meeting with the Whitman Board of Health regarding the status of licenses and permits issued by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health to Hungry Coyote on the premises located at 372 South Avenue. Uh, Board of Health people, you want to come up front so that you can use the microphones, please. had issues with uh, Francisco and the Hungry Coyote for months now. He's not opening uh, the hours that are posted. He's having other people run the restaurant when he's not there. He's been uh, very inconsistent, to say the least. Mm -hmm. He's a quiet a, I, I, I'm not sure if I should be discussing this, but a, uh, a license to serve alcohol in the past so many months also. Uh, that I think is an issue here, as far as not keeping the hours and serving the way he's supposed to be serving. And it's just been uh, basically uh, a fiasco with him. He's a very charismatic person, and people do love him in the town, and he does have a following, which makes it very hard for us to really uh, kind of like mm -hmm. give him a hard time about this. But it's just basically it's enough is enough with him. He has not been keeping the hours he should be keeping and serving people the way he has promised to do. Impossible for her to expect. Okay. Yes. And he, we talked to him about like keeping the door closed or by the doors. Again, he just isn't cooperating. Basically. And so you are, you are making a request of the board to pull his to, license. To pull his license. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to do something? Anyone discuss it? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Questions or discussion? State law says if you have a liquor license, you have to maintain posted hours, yes. correct? He did have someone serving one evening. I was in town uh, probably around 7 o'clock one evening, and I decided just to stop by and check, and he had someone serving, actually cooking, that did not have a food handler's license. And I asked him who he was, and he said, I did have a food handler's license that has expired now. I'm just filling in for an hour or two. Francisco did arrive shortly after that, and he had every excuse in the world why things were the way they were that night because his child was sick and whatever, but it's, there's always an excuse with Francisco, unfortunately. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he very, very rarely is he open, right? That's right. And is there a reason why, do you ask him why he's never, never open? There's always an excuse. There's something in his personal life that's not going properly or, um, it's usually that. Does he have another business in another area? He does. He's starting another restaurant in Needham. And I'm not sure if it's his business personally, but it's family business. Um, and it's in the process of being open in the next month or two. And he's been tied up with that recently also. He's mentioned possibly selling this business here. He doesn't want to let the town down leaving or his landlord down by leaving. And it's whatever. It's just a, a fiasco, let's put it that way. He just, just cannot get his act together. He told me he would come tonight to tell you that he would like to have another month to prove himself or whatever, but mm -hmm. he hasn't shown tonight. Well, yeah, the fact that he's not here tonight proves to me right. that he really doesn't want to do business or maintain that business. In That's that right. Yeah. Frank, do you have anything you want to add to this? Yes. The, uh, as uh, Selectman Lamantina stated, when we issue a liquor license, the license is required to operate the hours that the license is issued. The uh, board has the authority to either to suspend or revoke an all alcohol license, uh, not all alcohol, uh, I believe it's a beer and wine restaurant license. Um, and, and margaritas. 
Yes, yes he has alcohol, margaritas. It's, it's all yes. alcohol, yes. beer, um, mm -hmm. restaurant license. Mm -hmm. it's, it, uh, it is inappropriate to operate that way, and it has been an ongoing issue. I have a question for you. If, in fact, we revoke his all alcohol license, right, and we take that away from him, can he still operate the restaurant without that? And if, he, in fact, if he can or cannot, who's the authority that will take that license away? Is that the Board of Health? Board of Health. We take away the food. The food license. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. he's not complying. You're recommending that both both licenses be revoked, aren't you? We can't, we can't with the alcohol, alcohol but the but have, the food. You're, you're recommending yes, that the, the common Viddler's license right. be revoked because he hasn't been open. Yes. He said he was going to be open, and because you've seen occasions when the place wasn't supervised the way it was supposed yes. to be supervised. Yes, and it's impossible to make an inspection, also. Okay. I noticed that. Um, yeah, I believe he has a food truck as well. I've seen that. Around with he's that not same using name. that. He's not using no. it because I was wondering if that was part of his license. No. Through us or another no, town. No, he never did. Never did. Okay. Thank you. He has no interest in it, as far as I'm concerned. So we have a we have a motion on the board on the floor, right? Uh, motion to to revoke his uh, common middle license. license. Yes, sir. Which is what is yes. being asked, what is being requested. Yep. And there was a second. Anyone have any further questions or discussion? Yeah, that is all alcohol. Manny? Just that included the all alcohol, correct? Yes, yes. it's a common Bittler all alcohol yeah. restaurant license. Now, the revocation would mean if it were to reopen, they would have to go through the whole process again. In, in it, the, um, and I would also note that where we're meeting jointly with the Board of Health, they would have to separately vote on their action. I guess in the opinion of the Board of Health, have you given him other opportunities? Uh, is there any reason why we should consider suspending the license rather than revoking it? Um, you've been dealing with him longer than it's, we have. It's been going, well, I've been here for three and a half years, and it's been since I came to town. And it's, uh, we've given him all the chances in the world. Just so they understand what you just said, they have to take a, sec a separate vote? Yes. It's a joint meeting. Right, but we're voting on the license issued by the Board of Selectmen, yeah. they're a licensing authority that will have to vote to revoke the... Uh, can we revoke it here now? You can. Yeah. You're, you're in an open meeting right now. Who wants to go first? To revoke the license. The common Midwest license. It's your meeting. This is your, this is your part of the meeting. Two of them. Okay, she's making a motion. Eric is not here tonight, so they're okay. the board. Yeah, we okay, are. so you're the yeah. board. So did somebody second that? I didn't hear yeah, that. I did. You seconded it. it. Okay. Well, you? We're voting on the bad press on social media. Do you want to discuss it further? I don't think we believe. We discuss it. I don't think we need to. Yes. <laughs> and who's, who's acting as chair? I've tried to go into the place at least a dozen times, and it's never been open. All right. So, so who's, who's acting as chair today? I you are? Okay. Yeah. So why don't you call for a vote? I'm calling for a vote right now. All those second. <laughs> okay. Am I doing this in person? Yeah, you're doing it great. <laughs> so we, I heard, I heard there was a vote, and, and I, I see some people sort of raise their hands. Yeah. Okay, so you voted, so that's done. Yes. Okay, someone like to vote on the board? We have a, we have we a motion to revoke the, we have a motion to revoke the, uh, the whole thing, actually. Right. Motion, it's already been seconded, right? Right. 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 Any, any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another public meeting with respect to the application of platinum auto sales, platinum auto sales, I'm sorry, for class two auto dealers license on the premises located at 10 Buckley Avenue, subject to proof of workers' comp insurance, receipt of the $100 license fee, final inspection, Approval of the building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer and payment of delinquent personal property taxes. Is there a, a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, and on your agenda you see there's a note. There's a note there that talks about a letter a letter and an email from our building inspector. And I'd just like to read those into the record. 
Um, this is an email from Bob Carr and Frank Lynham, copied Lisa Green, with respect to 10 Buckley Avenue. Frank, as we discussed this morning, I have inspected the entire site at 10 Buckley Avenue. There are many issues related to junk vehicles, junk storage, and an illegal trailer at this site. I've spoken to the owner and will follow up with an enforcement order. There are also, this, and this, this is dated July 31st, there are also potholes in the roadway that the DPW has agreed to address. These issues are unrelated to the application of the Class II auto dealer's license. However, I would request that any new license be subject to the property being brought into compliance with our zoning bylaws. So that's an email. There's a letter from Bob to the Board of Selectmen. I have seen and reviewed the plan of Carolyn Snow for a Class II auto dealer's license at 10 Buckley Avenue. I have no objections to the issuance of this license. However, there are multiple zoning violations at this property unrelated to the applicant. These violations will need to be addressed to allow safe customer access to the display area. I have no objection to this license provided that this property is brought into compliance and inspected prior to the release of this license. So that's what I have. And we have a motion to approve subject to all of those things, proof of workers' comp insurance, receipt of the license fee, final inspection and approval of the building commissioner, the zoning enforcement officer, and payment of delinquent personal property taxes. And these two letters explain what the building commissioner, the zoning enforcement officer, is going to expect to have happened before this license can actually be, become actualized if we vote it. Attorney Whitney, Ready? one time no city. <laughs> yes, good you? evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, for purpose of introduction, my name is Ronald Whitney. Many of you know me, some of you don't. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm here with Caroline Snow, who is my client this evening. Uh, Caroline grew up in the town of Rockland and graduated from Rockland High School. She lives at 120 Burton Avenue with her significant other, who is here with her. Colin Emerson is in the first row here, just behind me. For the past three years, they've been operating a business known as CNC Automotive from this very site at 10 Buckley Avenue. The site is owned by Ken Sweezy, the fence guy down on Route 18. Uh, it's been owned by him for many years. It houses about six businesses uh, uh, related to the auto industry and other industries as well. And, and the site in total is about two and a half acres and it, um, and it employs many people throughout these six businesses. So Caroline and Colin have been operating CNC Automotive, uh, fixing cars and so forth for the past three years pretty successfully. And what they would like to do is have the opportunity to sell a few cars now and again. Now their operation will be different than any other used car operation in town insofar as it will be completely internet based. There won't be any flags waving, there won't be any signs, no neon, no nothing like that. In fact, you won't even know it exists unless you were to drive in there because you were attracted to the site because of something you saw online. So it's a very much a low-key operation. Uh, Colin and Caroline, between them, have two children. Uh, they did just buy their house in the past six months here in Whitman. So they've made an investment both in their business and in their home life in Whitman. And they would very much like the opportunity to just sell a few cars here and there as to augment their ongoing business. It, the application is in the name of uh, Platinum Auto, uh, and, and the reason for that is that if they are granted this license, they would like to change the name of the business. They propose hours of 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday from 9 to 3, and Sunday by appointment only. The operation that they have there now entails a parking area behind their shop. And I believe that the board was provided with a site plan that had been reviewed by Bob Curran and uh, he found it acceptable. It's a site plan, in fact, that went before the Board of Appeals a number of years ago, uh, I believe, when Mr. Sweezy was adding another building to the property. And so it was Bob Curran's opinion that it wouldn't be necessary to go back on this particular application, given its size and scope, 
uh, to the Board of Appeals. He, he felt that what's operating there now is much the same as what would be operating if this license was granted. So essentially behind uh, Caroline and Collins shop there is a fenced in area that uh, you'll see on the site plan has parking for 12 cars and uh, that's where these cars along with the repair vehicles would be housed. And, and both Caroline and I as well as Colin behind me would be glad to answer any questions that the board might have. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Ron, I understood you to say the change in name. The new name will be Platinum Auto Sales? Yes. Just wanted yeah. to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, Dan. Anyone else? I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, workman's comp insurance. You're saying that you do not need it because of the fact that it's your sole owner of it? Of the thing? Correct. Yes. But on the application that I that it has, it has two. Two employees. Two employees. Listed as so meaning that you and somebody else. Now is that other that per other person going to be a mechanic? I that guess that the, the, the cars? No, the two employees that I uh, spoke of was Caroline and, and Colin. Just the two of them. So they're going to be both owners, but yes. only it's showing her as the owner. Uh, why it says sole proprietor? Why isn't both names on it? Well, I suppose we could have put both names on. We just chose to file the application this okay. way. And are you going to have uh, a place where repairs will be made on these cars? Do you have somebody in mind that will be doing them? The uh, well, Colin will be doing them himself. So then he's an employee. <coughs> Well, he's self-employed. It's not a corporation. It's a sole proprietorship or a partnership. It's, it's, it's not a separate legal entity. Correct me if I'm wrong, Frank. If you have two, if, if you have- well, We're talking two different things. A, a sole proprietor would operate as an individual and would have 1099 right. uh, contractors or paid employees working for them as a partnership would involve two owners, in which case both owners would have to appear on the application records and the, uh, if it's not a corporation, business certificate filed with the town clerk's office. So, so, so then it, it, so the application needs the to other. be corrected. Mm -hmm. If I'm the application needs to be corrected? Well, it, it, it says sole proprietorship. If, if, if Carolyn is applying as the sole proprietor of the business, then everything would have to reflect that. And if that's if the case? If not, then it has to be, the application has to be updated. You just, you just confused me. <laughs> Sole proprietor to me means one. Right. right. One proprietor. That's what I said. Right. If she's applying as a sole proprietor, then everything here represents that. She's right. applying it, under a partnership. Except for the fact that there's, that her, her husband is going to be working for her. That's he's, he's what a boy. Uh, that's, that's not bad. No. <laughs> they, they live together. They've been yeah, together I mean, for it's ten something years we've been doing together. So, so, so. <laughs> I guess I, 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 maybe I'm just getting too old. <laughs> sole proprietor means one. If it's if it's if there are two proprietors, there should be two names on it, probably. Right. And if he's not, if he's not your employee, he's the other proprietor, correct? He's an indentured servant. He's an indentured servant. He's a slave. <laughs> <laughs> he's an employee. He's, and he he's, needs workman's comp. Is he going to be trying understood? In this understood. Area? No, but but time, time out. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. Is he yes. going to be drawing a paycheck in this? No. 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 So he's. I, mean, I would just, think that you just mean he's not an employee. Every once in a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> He'll have to ask her when he needs some money. Yeah. Cook him dinner. <laughs> If he's in the building, he's in a, right, even if he's not getting paid, he has to be an employee. He has to have work that's gone if he gets injured on site. Not, not if you're a contractor. Not if, if, you're, if you're not an employee of the business. You're a 1099 type employee. You're not really an employee. You're an independent contractor. And the independent contractor would have to make allowances for his protection. Although Ron will probably tell you there are cases where 
people working as independent contractors still got bagged by the industrial accident. No, oh, yes, there's many of those <laughs> cases out there. <laughs> but if it helps this board at all, what Colin is just telling me is that he, he's going he's going to keep C and C, and they're going to operate platinum a little bit separate. And let's face it, they're a couple. They've been together for 10 years. They live together, own a house together. Mm -hmm. They run this business together. I don't know how you want to characterize that, Danny, but honestly, it's not a situation where they need workman's comp. Well, what I'm looking at if is... If they I'm have one employee at, besides these two, they'll need workman's comp. I'm looking, at it, I'm looking at a sheet here that says, it's been checked off, I am an employer with two employees. Full and or part time. That's well, I could wipe that out if you'd like. Yeah, I, I could wipe that out if it's speak. confusing <laughs> to the board. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, you can't. I think what he's saying is he needs the paperwork to reflect what right. the situation really is. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's wrong. So they would have to resubmit right. another. Uh, uh, this, this industrial action form is basically an affidavit stating that either you have no employees or you have employees. Uh, right. What I don't want is the town to be giving out a license and then be held harm, you know, if something happened to something. I don't know. It's just Well the town the town would never be okay. liable no. for the actions. Under no the circumstances would the town become mm -hmm. liable. In fact if the industrial accidents board became aware that Colin and Caroline had an employee who was not covered by workman's mm -hmm. comp, there would most likely be a padlock slapped on the front door. And I've had that happen to clients in the past. And this is also subject to uh, personal property taxes being brought up to date. You yeah, that, that's, that's if, a, there, that's if the there are taxes in or is, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's in the motion. So. And you own the house on Burton Ave? Mm-hmm. Or does yes. his father own the house on Burton Ave? His father does. Right, so you don't own it. His father does. You live there. Right. Right, so Ron, that's another area. That's another error that you made, statement that you made. Well, this is what I was told. Right. I'm sorry. What I was told is they bought a house, and when I was told it was Caroline and Colin that bought the house. My apologies. Because yeah. I've been watching repaired. I live right behind them. Like yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lucky they're doing you. a good job yeah. in repairing <laughs> it, too. <laughs> Are you doing it? Yeah. yeah. Your father paying you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think we beat that to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion on the floor. And motion on the floor is to... Um, the application subject to all of those things. Um, as far as the proof of workers' compensation insurance, I think what needs to happen is that the application needs to be redone so that it reflects what the real situation is and that that becomes irrelevant. Um, and then there's also the zoning zoning more things that need to be taken care of. So all of all of if I we vote a positive all of it that would be subject to that. Anyone else have anything? Mr. Mr. Chairman, my, my issue is the back taxes. Back taxes, yeah, they have to pay. I mean, going back three years, so. Right. Yeah. May, may I inquire, because I was not aware that there were back taxes. Is that back taxes related to this applicant or yeah. to Ken Sweet? Property tax. Personal property. To you? Are you aware? It's actually, actually CNC. Yeah, CNC, all about personal property taxes. Brian, did you have something? Uh, yeah. The um, is there? A, are we setting some kind of a time frame on the conditions? And is uh, because they don't own the property, does the uh, Mrs. Sweezy have to be in, notified of these conditions that need to be um, upgraded to make sure it's in compliance with the, our requests? Good question. Uh, did that, usually when we um, approve something based upon uh, conditions, subject to those conditions, we leave right. it to the, the conditions have to be have to be met before the license right. is given to them. And so Bob Carlin would have to write to sign off on what he has to say. We need to have some proof that the delinquent personal property taxes that they exist are um, have been paid. Um, receipt of the hundred dollar license fee, etc. All of these things would have to happen before Laurie. So uh, the burden would be on them to make sure yeah. that right. Mr. Sweezy upgrades his portion of this 
site. Yeah, I think we understand that the license would not issue until Bob Current had Bob signed Curran off that everything had been done. Until, yeah. until just to, yeah. to be clear, yeah. uh, until I think I'd like to see the I'd like to see the application redone so that it reflects the situation. I can get I that done like, for you tomorrow. Okay, yeah. you can do that. Um, the receipt of in the receipt of the, the fee, the final inspection, all of that is up to Bob to Bob Current. The delinquent pro personal property taxes, the selectman's office would have to get uh, evidence. My client that. tells me he'll take care of that in the and, morning. Uh, those are the conditions. If, if we choose to vote, yes. One other thing: um, were any of the abutters notified about this? Whether they, they wanted to? I think are there any abutters? Well, I, I, well, businesses. The, based on the yeah. uh, the map, it looks like I saw some yeah businesses. some residential on the other side. I just didn't know if, if they had an opportunity to make um, their opinions felt. I don't know whether they I wanted know, Frank. Or not. There a, there's was there a, there there's was a no notice? requirement for about a notification for a class two. There's not. No. The purpose, uh, the use of the land is approved under action by the Zoning Board of Appeals, and as long as the business conforms to that, there's no additional requirement. Sure. Okay. If we put a, and, and I'll talk about past history, if we put a vehicle uh, license in a residential neighborhood, as a courtesy, we notify the abutters uh, because right. it could have an impact. Mm -hmm. And I, I can remember one time in the past where we did that uh, because the operator was going to operate out of her home. I have one other question. Frank, uh, Frank, I have a question. If, in fact, um, two questions. Uh, Sweezy Fence goes and cleans it up. It's his property. Correct. What if he wants to use it for storage? That's it. We'd have to tell him no. Uh, they would have to say, sorry, you can't use it for Too storage. Too many pronouns there. Who is the he? Sweezy Fence. Uh, if they wanted to use it for storage, because it's... It depends on the kind of storage. If it's open lot, he has to go to the Board of Appeals and get approval for it. Right. I don't know what's back there now. I, apparently, I guess it's... If it's a warehouse, then sure, you could use that. Vehicles. Yeah. Vehicles? Yeah. John, you know. But the... Uh, what I see happening here is the building commissioner is saying, new license is being requested here. This is an opportunity for the town to say, we'd like to license you, but we'd like to see the property in compliance before right. we do that. And that's what's happening here. You're, you're the... Uh, proverbial hammer to say to Sweezy, get in compliance. Because you're the tenant, you're not going to be happy if he doesn't do what's necessary for you to get your license. Squeezy, Sweezy. Makes sense. Yeah, and one squeezy, other question. Squeezy, Sweezy. <laughs> one other question, Frank. Uh, now, you intend to, most of the, all these cars will be sold online. That's you won't correct. be having customers coming in and no. out because you don't have a, like a storefront. Right. Right. No. right. Exactly. The only time a customer will come in and out there is right. if, if in fact you if they've connected through the right. Internet. If they see something that they want to buy online, they want to come down and look at it. Yeah. That's right. Okay. If in fact you find down the line the business is at the point where you would like to have it open oh, yeah. where people can come and look yeah, at three, four, and you six, just advertise six, on like autos, you know, uh, on uh, books and stuff. Does that different license have to be granted? Um, how many, how many spaces are included in this plan? Sixteen. It was a dozen. Sixteen. Twelve. 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 All right. So, as a class two licensee, they can have up to twelve vehicles on the site offered for sale. Now, if they choose to operate in an internet operation, they're likely going to have less than that, and they're going to bring the vehicles in when people agree to buy them. The problem they may have is if they buy a vehicle and then the buyer says, no, I changed my mind, then that then they have to sell that vehicle. And as long as it falls under the limit for the license, they can do that. We're not restricting their ability to sell vehicles. And we're not issuing an internet license because it doesn't right. exist. Anybody else? Do you have your hand up, Lori? Yeah, I just wanted to with Sweezy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well aware. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Where 
the applicant plans on amending their application, um, would the board still want to vote on this now, pending that change, or would we want to possibly withdraw? The only amendment would have to be the submission of a the work, it has new to workers' the comp, comp form. form. Right, right. Why, why don't we let, um, I, I'd be perfectly happy to have them uh, revise it, run it, and get it As I say, I can take care of it tomorrow. Revise it and uh, let, trust Frank to okay. make sure it's up to snuff. Well, if Mr. Uh, Whitney would like to have his applicant for the purpose of this hearing change that to no employees and strike the insurance with the understanding we'll get a new form tomorrow. That would bring this piece into compliance before you vote. All right. I, I, I got to see. I don't understand. How can you have a partnership and you have no employees, but yet a person is repairing vehicles? Well, the, the question, the question stands: Is it a partnership, or is it a proprietorship? What did you file with the town clerk? A proprietorship. And I guess the distinction is what my client has just brought to me, and that is that he's CNC Auto, and she is Platinum Auto. So. And the reality is, and I believe I'm correct on this, that as such, neither one of them could buy a comp policy that would cover them. Because they're, they're it. Comp policies have purchased so that my employee, if I have an employee, doesn't sue me. Their right. exclusive right. remedy is the comp policy. I shouldn't be making assumptions, but I assume the two in there would indicate one, two, one, two. Yeah. What instead of so just instead of doing changed. this right now, when we okay. let him bring it to you tomorrow, and we'll yeah. trust you to take care. Yeah. This is getting um, okay. thank you. a little bit too complicated yeah. for, for me. Does anyone have anything else? All those in favor of, uh, of the accepting the uh, the application with all. all once all of the conditions are met. Aye. 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 Okay, thanks so Thank much you. for your time. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Town Administrator's report, Frank. Um, I have, we have a number of things going on. Last Thursday, the uh, chairman, vice chairman, and I, and town accountant uh, met with the Collins Center to review uh, the almost final draft of the capital plan. Uh, as I mentioned to Randy last night, the, uh, I believe the updates were emailed to us Friday. I just haven't got into the bin yet. Uh, but we should uh, be expecting in short order to be holding a public meeting to discuss the results of that planning. Likewise, uh, we will be introducing a new budget format that it provides much more information to citizens as part of our budgeting process. That's your report? That's my report. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> budget override evaluation committee. Do you have anything to say in the, bu in the budget review, or is, are we going to do budget override evaluation committee? Is that report? That I, I thought the, uh, the well. I should comment on the budget review. We have asked and have received some, but not all, of the departmental budgets for a five-year expenditure okay. plan. At the same time, uh, last night I presented the first draft of a five-year revenue estimate. Uh, we're fine-tuning those. Mr. Galvin, who has been participating in our process, came in this morning and we met uh, and talked about one of the items, which is estimated uh, excess levy, something that has been a topic of discussion for a while. And we sort of got uh, an explanation from the Department of Revenue Still not quite sure I understand it, but basically, if we don't raise the money 
that appears an excess levy, the opportunity to use that money is gone for that year. However, that money then ends up in the levy limit. I'm, I just haven't satisfied myself that works yet. <laughs> Mr. Galvin, have any uh, any elucidation on that? <laughs> you, can we tag? Can we tag team this thing? I, um, John Galvin, High Street. Uh, I disagree with the comment that he just made. Um, the excess levy does need to be appropriated. Um, however, if it is, uh, it does not end up in the levy limit the following year. It is a one-time use. If that, if we levy, if our levy is above the levy limit, any excess levy cannot be used the following year. So it's a one-time use. And that's the discussion that Frank and I had at length this morning. Mm -hmm. And I still think we're not on the we, same page yet. Discuss it more. And, that's, and that's where we part because I agree with John that if we don't use that money when it's available to us, the opportunity to use it is gone. But again, according to the DOR, the levy limit reflects that money because it's the difference between what we are levying and what we could levy that year. So it's in that levy limit. And then the following year, 2.5% gets added to it. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We'll look forward to an update the next time. Uh, <laughs> thanks, John. Is that your report, Frank? That is. <laughs> good. Um, Randy. Budget Override Evaluation Committee. Uh, okay, uh, you, you just got a slight ta uh, taste of how daunting. Oh, was how it went last night. <laughs> <laughs> how, how daunting this is going to be. Uh, I think we made a lot of progress. Uh, that was my first meeting. Again, I had family issue. I had to miss the first one. Um, but we, we did manage to, one, set, set a mission statement of what the Budget Override Evaluation Committee actually is going to do and that is simply evaluate this town's needs whether or not we are going to need to proceed outside prop two and a half to to maintain services people have gotten accustomed to or can we actually go without one mm -hmm. okay i don't think any decisions clarity did not come last night but we've put some building blocks in place uh, we have the school committee going to the Mass Association of Regional Schools. They're going to, and this was approved by Superintendent Simonac, seek an independent audit through MARS. Uh, we, so we talked ba a basic timeline, whether or not the October 1st was uh, going to be possible. Um, there was a lot of disagreement that that would happen. Uh, the timeline basically was try to get this done in a time frame that was well before May, that if an override was to be sought, could properly be present, presented. Uh, an issue also came out, and I believe Frank was in agreement with this. Um, we, know, we all know what it takes to put together one year's budget. Well, basically we're trying to do five years in six weeks. I don't have a doubt that Frank, if we told him, set, and Frank and Lisa, if we told them set aside all town business, and this is what you have to work on for six weeks, could get this done. We all know that's not possible. There was some discussion to come to this board. It, it was voted on last night and approved unanimously to hire a consultant to really aid in this process, someone uh, well-versed in, in forecasting and that's what this is about it's being able to say this is where we are now what's the five-year outlook what is that going to be are we going to meet our needs are we going to be able to maintain service I would actually ask this board tonight if within the realm of um, our typical procurement process if it was a if we were able to could would this board approve the evaluation committee seeking that consultant. Okay. 
someone like to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. I do have a question. question. Do you have any idea of what that's going to cost? And uh, we, we mean, do have a, a rough cost estimate of, cost estimate of under $10,000 will not exceed. Not to exceed. Not to exceed $10,000. So we'll roll that into the motion. Yeah. And, uh, and just do uh, you have an idea where that would come out of? Um, my thought is to reach out to the Finance Committee. This is a right. pivotal part of what we need to do. And in one sense, we would be asking the Finance Committee to commit 20% of its reserve fund to that one expense. On the other hand, that reserve fund became a less critical part of our financial operation when the state modified its uh, rules to allow inter and intra-departmental transfers during the last two years, the last two months of the year. It is typically in April, May, and June that the Finance Committee generally gets hit with, here's something we didn't expect, we need help. This is certainly not something we anticipated. And just to clarify, because it was brought up last night, the work that the Collins Center is doing for us does not include a financial review and forecast. It has, they did a great job putting together a capital plan. They did a good job putting together a, a budget uh, document that allows us to present and explain all of the things that go into our budget. But this is something that I think really helps us in terms of credible support for presentation. You, a lot of people out there, well, you know, they're all working because it's in their interest to do that. And I get frustrated when people say that because I think most of us do work in the best interests of our functions. But this is a third party independent assessment that says, I have reviewed your process and your numbers and here's my observations. It helps make the whole process mm -hmm. more understandable to the general public. And I, and I, I I'm sorry, Dan. I don't know if you see, but I think also this could be you know, where, where we have the survey, where we have one piece, where we have the Collins report now. This is that other piece of that foundation that I think really goes along that's going to aid us in that strategic this, plan. This, it, yeah, it's, it's the, the bulk of the material you need in a strategic plan. So uh, yeah, it is. It's, 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 what you're talking about is the strategic plan. Right. Yes. Random Sorry. question. The member that's on the finance committee on your board, um, how does he feel about possibly going asking for the reserve fund? transfer of that amount of money. No objections were raised at last night's meeting. I think there was something else to consider that was a discussion that we had at length last night was having not only this independent financial evaluation um, from one source but also the school doing it from their source. Now we have two individual analysis of the same information right. to be able to have both of them and if they come out similar that's going to look really good on where we're going if they come out different then it's going to obviously give us something else to talk about but being that they the key word here is independent you know even the board you know I'm the citizen at large I'm not involved with the government at all but still that committee or our committee is made up of mostly government people. So having independent you, sources. You become a government person. No. Yes, you have. Having now a municipal employee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> having having th you know those independent sources gives us really a lot of good information to get out to the people. Question: Does a consultant that you're thinking about will they be looking at the um, the schools as well as the town? They are going to look at the whole picture. And the, and the Mars will be looking at the schools. Mars right. no, will Mar be looking at the school uh, operations yes. and how the town okay 
funds those operations. The, the Mars, so infra we'll looking Mars is looking at everything as well. Basically, two independent sources looking yeah, at the same stuff. Yeah, same so stuff. Good Mar the Mars is is interesting, actually, but okay. that was... And, and that report wasn't free. Uh, Jeff will be paying for that uh, on a... I believe he had to approach Hanson, but he did put in the uh, purchase orders to do this. So the school Good. is also kicking in for their portion of, of, an, of an audit. So they'll be looking at, to some degree, they'll be looking at both of our towns right. for information to help them in their analysis. Is the, on their analysis of the school, that goes with school funding too, with state funding? It'll go through the entire process. And MARS, the Mass Association of School Committees, is a group that's been around a long time and has vast experience in looking at this stuff. And they can actually figure out an assessment, something we've been challenged yeah. to do. Right. I got a couple of questions. Uh, one, let's say, this is relating to the vote on the motion to, to fund yes. the, the company. Um, let's say Mars comes back with a specific for the school's answer and we come up with something drastically different, but both require an override, would we have a two-question override to, uh, to uh, answer that need? Can, can I take can a I shot? Give a shot? Yeah. Can I take a shot at that? Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you're jumping ahead of the... Yeah, I know it is. You're jumping ahead, ahead. I think, it, as Randy started off, this mission is to, the mission of this committee is to evaluate the town's needs, um, coming up with a conclusion of whether or not we have an override or not. The format of that override is something that needs to be discussed later. Right. We get all the information. Like I said last night, I really think this is going to be a two-step process. Mm -hmm. One is the diagnosis, if there is a need, what that need, that number is. The, the next, I think, it, there are a lot of other, our board, finance committee, school committee, that's going to play a pivotal role in that, of where the money's going to go. Mm -hmm. And the, the last part of that question was our regional agreement. We have to settle that, I would say, before any of that happens because that will be different. That was part of last night's discussion, and we do, there are some things we have to look at based on the conclusions that come from okay. Mars. Okay. Okay. Any, any further questions or discussion? Uh, I would just add to, to Brian's question that at the first meeting of that committee, um, there was a reluctance expressed to have a sort of build your own mm -hmm. choice on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, just out of, yeah. we don't want to overwhelm or confuse the voters, sure. and yeah. those tend to yeah. backfire. No, I, yeah, I get that. I, and the schools have I, expressed support in a one option override as opposed to a yeah, I, What I foresaw and what I foresee is, is, is that, is, is a yep. figure that based on all of this information yep. the town is going to need um, to be to, to take care of its needs the way we'd like them to take care of right. over the next five right. years. And um, the town also, they, they have to see the figure, but they also have to see where it's being spent right. and why it's being spent. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean uh, a bunch of different And things. that's part of what this committee is responsible right. for yeah. delivering. Right. right. And the ultimate decision on what the question looks like is going to be made at this table. Right. Anybody else? Thanks, Justin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You got some money? Do I have to abstain from that? No. no. Okay. Either. No. All right. <laughs> no. Um, unless you're the consultant. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Unless you're hiring yourself. You're not getting paid, Randy. Right. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, anything else, Randy? Or are you, uh, are, you, are you through? That would be it. Okay, thank you. That's all right. Thank and we meet uh, August 26th again. Is our next August 26th? But we will have, we will have, August, we will have um, hired the consultant by that time. Yes. Right. Yes. And I expect to happen as soon as okay. we have okay. verified available funds. So they'll act, you might actually have to some things to discuss once it, it, on August the maybe jumping the gun but the discussion was if this transpired the way it right. just did we would have him present great mm -hmm. have a little bit more feedback for the 26th okay. for our meeting after the 26th okay new business act on the request of ally alley motors uh, incorporated to increase the vehicle limit from 60 to 114 in connection with the class 2 auto dealers license on the premises located at 934 temple street Bob Curran wrote a letter regarding the elimination of four of the requested additional spaces. Okay, is there a motion to, uh, to 
to do so to increase the vehicle. Some, and, some and it would be to increase the. I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting we accept Bob Connor's recommendation. So it would be to increase it from 60 to 110. Okay. Is that yes. am I understand it? Okay. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Must be ally. I, yeah. Mr. Chairman, yes. I can tell you that I accompany Bob on those visits, and Bob has been out there several times, and these gentlemen have been very cooperative working with us to get to the point where Bob has made that recommendation. Okay. And, and you're aware of the recommendation, and you're okay with it? Correct. Yes. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No, but I want to commend you for what you did in, on your site and changing things around and, and uh, going with Bob Curran and working with him and getting the job done. It looks a lot better. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That was easy. Chief Reno, request to call for fire chief exam. Any motion for that? Four. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, 12 years ago in September, you appointed me as fire chief off of a civil service written exam. How many years ago? 12 years in September. Seems like, seems like only 12 minutes ago. Doesn't it? Yeah. I come before you this evening to ask you that, or to suggest to you that you start the process on how you plan to promote your next fire chief. I would suggest that you, um, and I'll be here to work with you, obviously, is if you want to stick with the written exam or if you're going to do an assessment center or, or, or whatever your, your um, thoughts are, um, it would be my suggestion that the list is good for two years, so you should probably maybe try to look at doing something in the springtime, um, early summer at the latest. That will give you a list that's valid for two you're years. Telling us you're going to be around only for a couple more years, is that? Um, my wife and I are in discussions right now, and I can tell you that when does she say you're retiring? She's telling me that uh, pretty much you, you should hold the assessment center or the written test now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Springtime, and it's going to give you two years off a list, and I'm fairly confident that that sound like you'd be, and, uh, be uh, promoting off that you're list. recommending one of those processes? Um, statewide, we're seeing the assessment center process. In fact, Frank, I don't believe civil service is doing a written chief's exam anymore. I haven't um, seen a written chief's be test in years. Before you see one. Yeah. What? If they if they do, there there is no uh, current written test for chief. Uh, and Chief Grenner was right. As you look around the state, more and more communities are opting for sole assessment center. You can, you can have a combination weighted graded so long as the assessment center creates the written exam. Civil service right now isn't doing that. Uh, we just went through an assessment center with the police. It was sole assessment. Um, and we're going to talk about the results tonight in another uh, item on the agenda. And I would recommend that the board consider sole assessment center as a assessment for the next. And is that statewide right. or in-house? Uh, civil service requires in-house unless you don't have enough applicants. You need four applicants to sign up for from within house from all grade levels. And consequently, the, the company that you utilized for the police chief and deputy police chief um, was actually the same company that I was looking at to use for the deputy chief's exam. So um, they do the fire exams also. Okay. Okay. Do we need to do we need to vote to uh, to call for an exam? Oh, yes. To call for well, that's not an exam, is it? It's an assessment. It, it is an exam. It's an assessment center exam. Okay. Okay. And um, we would uh, have to do whatever is necessary in the way of procurement to uh, select. Right. Okay. And 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 you could realistically wait until probably after a town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, because it's going to take them two months to certify the list, so you're two years out. So, I mean, I can tell you I won't be here in, in, in any longer than probably J August 1st of 2022. So, okay, so, so that list will be promoted off. Like I'll make that motion. We do an article for when we give the police, or is that just? No, oh, it okay. came out of expenditures. Right, I'll make that motion. Second. I don't like Tim's wife yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> she has a plan. Any further questions? Do we, need to, do we need to set a date? Uh, well, springtime good enough? Do you want to set a date by which? Well, the date can't be set until 
It's the John. assessment, no, to the I'm assessment not. center designs their exam and submits it to civil we're service. We're basically asking our procurement officers to yeah. get yep. us. Yes. Okay. So what will happen is we'll select a, a uh, company. That company yep. will prepare yep. an assessment process, submit it to civil service. Right. Civil service will approve it. Mm -hmm. And then the test can be scheduled. Yeah, if you follow the same schedule that you followed on the police side and did something in April or May, if you certify for July, you'd be good. Yes. Okay, all those in favor of doing whatever we said we were going to do. Aye. 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 Thank you. Chief, you're up again. Storm reimbursement funds. So it, it's, it's, I'm happy to announce to you that the MEMA public assistance program um, back for, for the March 2nd and 3rd storms of 2019, I, no, 2018. I think it was um, through the hard work of my my um, administrative assistant Lisa Riley, w working with the DPW and the police department, um, we're due to receive a reimbursement of from federal funds for emergency preparedness, overtime, and um, debris re removal um, in the amount of thirty nine thousand five hundred sixty four dollars and sixty nine cents. That's seventy five. Something we looked at like eleven months ago. Yeah. It finally came through. That's seventy five percent of what we requested, so okay. thank you. That check will be coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Did I tell Lisa the board appreciates what she had to do. Thank you. Take action to reappoint Ronald Rock to the position of non voting member of the Whitman Recreation Commission for a three year term through June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. So moved. He was inadvertently admitted from the annual appointment list. This so has moved. been moved, seconded. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Take action to appoint Al Cunningham as Deputy Director of Operations for WEMA for a one-year term through June 30th, 2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Take action to renew the fortune teller's license for STARS tarot cards, Amanda Cole, on the premises located at 418 Bedford Street. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No, no wise, wise cracks. I'm not going to say it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You anyway. Take this is what I meant. Take action to reappoint Kevin J. Dalton to the position of constable for a three year term through August 27, 2022. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would ask that this motion be made to include subject to receipt of subject required to documentation. Okay. 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 This has been moved and seconded. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Take action to reappoint George Vemus to the position of constable for a three-year term through August 6, 2022. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Act on the notification of retirement from Chief of Police Scott Benton. Frank. Uh, as you know, Chief Benton has submitted a letter advising us of his intent to retire, uh, which certainly will trigger a couple of actions on the part of the board. The chief plans uh, to work until September 16th of this year, at which time he will retire and it will become necessary for the board to take some action. Uh, and hopefully between now and then we'll have an opportunity to have the chief up here and thank him for his years of service and commitment to the community. Oh, we could also thank him now. That's right. Well, but maybe we could do it in, <laughs> in a more, a more, more, more formal setting. Manner. In a more formal setting, yes. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to uh, accept with, with regret the uh, letter of resignation from the chief? I'll make that motion. Second. Anyone have any questions? So his last day of work will be September 16th. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, chief. Thank you. First day of golf would be 917, right? <laughs> First round of they golf? No, but, already have done that <laughs> but, but, but something else can happen on 917. Um, we added to the agenda to review the promotion list for police chief and deputy police chief and consider appointments. Um, it would be my suggestion at this time, and I've talked to Frank about it, that um, we have promotion lists, rankings from one to four, both police chief and deputy chief. And um, in order for this transition to be as seamless as possible, I would recommend that we, um, I would like a motion 
to, uh, we'll do the police chief first, to appoint Timothy Hanlon as the chief of police. Okay, he came in number first on the, on the list. Uh, effective the 17th of, of uh, September. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? No. Uh, just that, you know, I've been the liaison for the police uh, as a, a member of this board and as a member of the finance committee for the last two plus years, and I, I can't think of a better person for the job. And neither did the, neither did the, <laughs> neither uh, did the, 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 the uh, <laughs> uh, anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Congratulations, Chief. Yeah. And so, for Mr. Chairman, yes. in order to facilitate dates, uh, the motion should be upon the retirement. We don't have two. And just in case he day. decides to stick around after the 16th. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably true. And and also, <laughs> <laughs> and and also subject to whatever negotiations we have. With, Correct. Yeah, with, uh, with with Chief Ham, but it's our expectation that. Once Chief, once Chief Best Benton isn't here, the Chief Allen would be the, would be the Chief. Yeah. Everyone would, yeah. Uh, Deputy Police Chief, uh, number one on the list uh, is uh, Joseph Bombardier. I'd like a motion to appoint him to uh, Deputy Chief on the same day. Motion. Second. Subject to yeah. everything happening. Yeah. yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is Joe here? No. Nope. No. No. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, also, um, I believe Joe is a sergeant currently. Um, we may want to add that to the future agenda if that had opened up a spot to call, oh, for, to call for that list. Okay, good, good point. We'll let the, we'll let, before he retires, we'll let the Chief, um, Chief Benton suggest that a call for it or whatever. We have a sergeant's list. Yeah. Uh, we do. Uh, we have a sergeant's list already. I think that has to be normally called for a sergeant. Yeah, we haven't called for we haven't called for a sergeant. Chief, you do have an active sergeant's list. Right, right. I see. It so like that. that's good until 2021. I believe they're given another test. So once right. that list comes out, so but that, that test is September. So I would say there'll be a new list out by December, mm -hmm. November, December. But you have a, an active list right now, with uh, you know three people on right. it. So. What do you suggest? I wouldn't wait. I would. I mean, you know, you're making promotions, you're moving people around. I think it's uh, uh, critical to, you know, replace those people. Have management, you know, supervisors in place. So. I would I would suggest to um, you know to keep obviously the the transition smooth on the management end. You've taken the steps that you needed to, which I think is great because it gives time for uh, other things to happen. Uh, you know, Tim and I and other conversations to, to be had. But I think it's critical to keep moving forward. Okay, so we should do we should do the sergeant now. Is that what you were going to suggest, Randy? I, I, I didn't know if we formally had to call for that, but it, it, if there was a... Uh, we have an active list. That's an active list, and it's good. And we have to... Well, so if we have an active list, we could we could use it. Someone right. like to make a motion. I'll make that motion that we... Uh, Second. Okay. To, and this would be to appoint, uh, once the once all of the other people uh, fall into place, to appoint... Right. Uh, right. Effective right. of the opening of... Uh, Right, sergeant's position. Right, right. Patrick Bert Henderson. Yep. First any, on the list. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next meeting date. I guess we didn't set one last time. We need to set another date yep. in in, uh, in August. Anybody have any suggestions? Twenty, October twenty. I mean, I'm sorry. August. <laughs> August twenty. Okay, August twenty will be the answer. Okay, I will, I will not be here for that. Um, Lisa, are you? Yeah. Doesn't have to be that. If you want to, the next week. I just made a suggestion that so. Twenty to, to the board. We'll do the twenty. We'll do the twentieth, and Lisa can 
sit in the... We should move her name tag from over there to down there. I offered to swap seats. Okay, uh, <laughs> the next uh, next thing on the agenda is an executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, uh, section, Exception 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And number the Exception 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. So moved. Is there second. a second? Yes. 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 Okay. We'll be in executive session and we'll uh, open again only to adjourn.